welcome back everyone to another video and today i have something special to show you this unlike a lot of the other boards that i've shown most of them are really powerful lots of ram and even if they're not powerful they are still more powerful than this um or at least have more ram than this so um I'm just creating this build up for no apparent reason because I probably have the name in the description. Um, this is the Lichi Pi Zero uh, and this is the entire board by itself. The LCD of course is bigger than the board. Um, the flex cable on the LCD is bigger than the board. So I have a really old 2 gigabyte full size SD card here um, and if you place it right on top uh, it's uh, width is exactly the same as the SD card and um, yeah a little bit longer but almost as large as the full size SD card right so let's get into the specs this is a 1.2 odd gigahertz Cortex ARM A7 uh, on this CPU yes this is a CPU it is in a quad uh, flex package and um, Usually you have the BGA kind of a thing where uh, all the pins are at the bottom but this is a quad flex package and you will notice a few of the pins that have been soldered together. This is uh, like by manufacture. Uh, it's like that. It's not a manufacturing defect or anything. So they are I think shorting the ground or the win pins. Um, uh, some of that stuff. So that's all there is to it. That's the, um, that's the CPU. Uh, 1.2 GHz it has embedded RAM so there is no RAM chip at the bottom all the good power management stuff up down there you can add your own QSPI flash it will boot from that as well no issues there but uh, you have your SD card slot here which can also use the uh, use a Wi-Fi um, adapter so apparently there is a SD to Wi-Fi adapter available and you can buy that and you can have Wi-Fi on this and uh, not have an SD card boot from USB, USB and then you have um, you have 64 megabytes or 512 megabits that's how they advertise it's 512 megabits but it's actually 64 megabytes of embedded RAM in there uh, and you have your micro USB so that's all you have for power and USB or you can have your own pins what 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 I'll be doing is to power it through the uh, power pins so the 5 volt and the ground volt, ground pins here and other stuff here um, yeah so as I said not a very complex board a uh, few power related stuff here and just one sock up there uh, it has a 40 pin LCD driver in build uh, and you do get these LED, uh, LCDs pretty easily uh, I won't say they are too easily available but they are still fairly easily available uh, it does support um, does support resistive touch but this LCD came with capacitive touch and has the little capacitive touch um, chip here so that's useless completely useless uh, but you can see the flat flex cable actually has pads for the resistive touch LCD to solder on and those go into the 4 pin uh, LCD connector. The 4 pin LCD connector also has uh, camera input as well so that it combines both you can use either or you can use like low res LCD and a camera some odd combination like that. So the chip itself was mostly used in uh, all winners like action cameras those like really cheap knockoff of the GoPro knockoffs so that's what I'm going to call it again you have a lot of pins so it's kind of created in a SOM ish form factor because you have USB and Ethernet breakout here and on that end as well a lot of other IO pins high speed and low speed um, so yeah it's kind of in a SOM fact form factor but you can use it any way you want alright so let's power it up um, I have on there uh, some very basic Linux install it's a 4.14 based uh, build uh, you can run mainline I wasn't able to get the LCD to work properly the LCD did respond uh, while booting mainline but it didn't display anything so I'm still looking into it haven't given that a lot of thought and that should boot so 
if you have noticed already the screen is not looking very good uh, and that is because it's not it's kind of dead um, so not the whole screen is dead again you can see there is text coming on there so the screen itself is okay the glass kind of cracked uh, they are sending a replacement unit so that's all good and so I can enter onto it and go into build root login so I'll log in as root and there you are enter you name a and that gives me a uh, Linux build root 4.14.14 14. so uh, it yes it does have just 64 megabytes of RAM but it can do wonders uh, so right now we are just drawing around 1.6 uh, amps a quick reboot let's see what the max current draw is at boot time and we climbed up to 1.9 for a second and uh, that seems to be our highest it seems to be stable at 1.6 and that is with the display attached so you need to understand that there's the display backlight that's also working again 1.9 ish at the max um, and then settles down to 1.6 so there's the display attached there's the uh, keyboard dongle attached which I don't think takes much current there's the SD card uh, again that doesn't take a whole lot of current it's mostly is the display which is probably taking more current than the actual board itself so we will remove the display in the second and uh, see how much it draws without the display so let's power this off and change the SD card so I can show you all what uh, it can actually do so so a little bit of blank screen there you can see something moving and we have a GUI a pretty decent GUI now yes the mouse is behaving very erratically so you can see uh, I can barely control it and that's because of these pins are being exposed and it's actually reading the subtle differences between uh, the voltages there so if I actually move my fingers on the pin I can have the move, mouse move uh, in, in weird ways so I don't know what is the best way to kind of restrict the mouse from moving so sadly with the fake-ish mouse uh, ruining the day every time I press tab it taps on the login button so I can't go further than that with, with the current setup so we have booted up it's taking 40 uh, milliamps or now 10 settles down at 10 milliamps and then at zero so it's kind of behaving weirdly and if you can see not a whole lot of current draw and the LCD was the thing that was taking most of it so we are sitting at uh, around 10 20 and then sometimes it now it just shuts off because again this thing is detecting there's no load on it so that's how power efficient uh, such slow processors are uh, with embedded RAM and all of that stuff and that's why they are made so there's some very specific projects for which one might buy this uh, of course it doesn't have a lot of compute or RAM for that matter but yeah I have a project in mind which should be coming up soon uh, with this one uh, it might take a while because there is a lot of 3d printing involved and I am not really good at it but uh, we will be uh, bring this one back so yeah an interesting little board um, not much else to talk about it so that's it for the moment make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and you know hit that bell icon for future videos on this board and other boards um, and I will see you all in the next one